Good afternoon. Welcome to Inside Indiana Sports Now with Kent Sterling. It's Friday, April 30th, 2021. We're brought to you by the great people at Today's Dentistry. Dr. Mike O'Neill, the best dentist I've ever gone to. 27 years he's been my dentist. I look forward to every visit. You will too. Call him, 317-849-2933. Hit subscribe, hit like, ring the bell. Let's go. Let's talk about sports. The NFL draft continues tonight. Second round, third round, but let's not put the first round to bed entirely yet. Let's go back to last night and talk about what the Colts did. They took Quiddy Pay out of Michigan, a captain. Chris Ballard loves that. He likes to be coached. Chris Ballard covets that. He is an outstanding athlete. He is fast. He is relentless. Chris Ballard wants all of those things, demands all of those things from players that he's going to draft. He's also got a good story. I got to tell you the truth about the story. I know he and his family left war-torn Liberia, came to the United States, sacrificed everything coming here, and they're living the American dream. I know all of that stuff. I don't care. I care from a human perspective about him as a person. That's a neat story, and I like it. But him as a football player, he's got to get to the quarterback. I want sacks. I want strip sacks. I want turnovers. Let's go. Let's put pressure on opposing quarterbacks. This is what I want out of Quiddy Pay. There are a lot of guys with great stories. Goga Batadza, tremendous story. Fled war-torn Georgia, right? The former Soviet Republic. He's here in Indianapolis. He's not playing real well. In fact, he's not playing at all while he's injured. So that story doesn't resonate with me. I don't care. He lived on the streets for like 18 months, Goga Batadza did. You know what? If you can't put the ball in the bucket and keep the other guy from putting the ball in the bucket, I don't want to hear your story. As far as quitty pay, you know what? Hit the quarterback. You hit the quarterback. I'm going to get real interested in your story and how you became a guy who's hitting the quarterback a lot. I don't mean to be indifferent to humanity, but let's face it. Football is a business where you got to do what you're paid to do. So I want to see Quiddy Pay take care of that business. I don't need to hear any more about war-torn Liberia. No offense to Quiddy Pay. I'm sure he's a great guy. I'm sure his mom is a wonderful person. I have no doubt of any of that. I want him to hit the quarterback. That's how I'm going to judge Quiddy Pay. And for the people who are rating this draft pick, an A+, plus, based upon what? Why? Nothing against, again, Quiddy Pay, Chris Ballard, the entire brain trust of the Indianapolis Colts. But based on what are you ranking this uh, or rating this an A+. Plus? Why? I have no idea. I hope that in three years we look at this and say, man, that was a steal at 21. That's an A+. Plus. But right now it's like, you know, you, you did what you're supposed to do. You took the guy who is at the top of your board at the time you had the opportunity to pick him. How is that? How's that A plus work? You know what I mean? That's like showing up for class, not even taking a test and getting an A plus on it. You, you, Chris Ballard gets an A plus because he showed up and read the name at the top of the board. All right. Anyway, let's take a deep breath about Quiddy Pay and understand that in three years we're gonna under, we'll get what this is and we'll be able to assess a grade tonight. Is all about what the Colts are going to do at 54. They don't have any of the equity necessary to trade up in this draft. And so they're going to have to draft at 54 a solution to their left tackle vacancy, or they've got something else in mind. There are a lot of good offensive line prospects still available in this draft, a lot of them left tackles. You've got guys like Sam Cosme, who may be available at 54. He is a beast of an athlete. He may be a wonderful left tackle in the National Football League. There are people who are a little bit indifferent about Sam Cosme. His grades, fantastic physically. But there's something that people just don't like. Tevin Jenkins, I think, is going to be gone by 54, certainly. Right tackle from Oklahoma State. Could be a right or left tackle for the Indianapolis Colts or whoever drafts him. I think he's gone by the time you get to 54. You've got Walker Little. I think he's going to be gone by the time you get to 54. A really, really good prospect, but he's played part of one game since 2018. He played that whole season in 18 and really kind of set himself up to make a lot of money playing football because he projects as a starting left tackle in the National Football League based upon what he did in 2018. He played part of one game in 2019, got injured, and then in 2020, he opted out. So where is he in his development? 
And where does he project to be in his development? That's the question that teams need to answer before they're going to invest a second-round pick in Walker Little. But somebody's going to do it because on paper, he's just too damn good. Uh, Spencer Brown, I think he's going to be available, but he is not a guy who projects to be a starter this coming year. He's got a lot to learn about the position and about playing in the National Football League, playing left tackle at a really high level. He isn't ready. And the Colts, they need somebody who is ready right now to step in and be that plug-and-play starter. And getting Spencer Brown at 54 is possible, but coaching him up to the level he needs to be coached up in order to start at left tackle for the Colts and protect the blind side of Carson Wentz, I don't think that's doable. Jalen Mayfield... He could play in a number of places on the line, just not left tackle, right? So if you draft him and you put him on the interior, you could move Quentin Nelson out, or you could put him at right tackle. Mayfield could be a starting right tackle, plug-and-play guy. Maybe Braden Smith is somebody that the Colts are looking at to move to left tackle. If they, if they draft Jalen Mayfield, you can bet your bottom dollar that what Ballard is thinking about is moving Braden Smith over to left tackle to take the place of Anthony Costanzo. Uh, you've also got Landon Dickerson. Uh, Landon Dick Dickerson is from Alabama. He's a center, but he can also play guard. If he's available at 54, you could draft him and slide Quentin Nelson out to left tackle. If that is what the Colts are thinking. If they're seriously contemplating moving Quentin Nelson three feet to his left, then Landon Dickerson is a guy that they may invest that 54th picking. Liam Eikenberg. Could be. He's a left tackle. He has played left tackle, started left tackle for the last three years for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Not a great athlete, but he's pretty good. He's okay at what he does. He's a guy who has kind of become a craftsman to overcome his athleticism or his lack of athleticism. Uh, but he's short-armed. And guys don't like short-armed left tackles. 32-inch arms, no good. 34-inch arms, they like a lot. Dylan Raddins from North Dakota State. Dylan Raddins, kind of a long-armed guy. I think he's going to be gone by the Colt, time the Colts get to 54, but some of these guys are going to be there. And if the Colts take one, you know that that's the guy. If the Colts take somebody else, if the Colts take like a cornerback, which would be crazy, please, dear God, don't let Chris Ballard near the phone to call for another cornerback in the second round. We've gone through Quincy Wilson. We're still going through Rocky Scene. Please don't draft a cornerback in the second round again, Chris. Jim say disconnect the phone. Rip the phone out of the wall and say, no, I'm putting my foot down this time. We're not going through this again. All right, we'll talk about that in a minute. But a wide receiver, if you can get a wide receiver at 54 and you have kind of an alternative for left tackle, I'm all about that. That's cool. I'm cool with that. A wide receiver, there are going to be wide receivers available at 54 who are good and can play football and will play football at a high level in 2021. So go ahead and do that. But let's talk about Chris Ballard and what he's done in previous drafts with similar picks to where the Colts are tonight. Okay, in 2017, the Colts, with a 46 overall pick, drafted the aforementioned Quincy Wilson. The cornerback, who is really, really young, remains really, really young. He's younger than Rocky Asin, who was drafted two years later. That's how young Quincy Wilson out of Florida was. Quincy Wilson was overmatched. He never got kind of up to speed. His, his physical traits really never came into play as he tried to play cornerback in the National Football League. It just didn't work out for Quincy Wilson. In 2018... At, uh, at 52, Kamoko Ture, who we're still trying to figure out, and if he had been healthy, Kamoko Ture could have been, at this point, a really good edge rush guy. Sadly, tore his Achilles last year. He's had a couple ankle surgeries. We'll see how he bounces back from that. Last year, he played a little bit, but he was not anywhere near 100%. Maybe he can be that this year and become the player that Chris Ballard thought he would be when he was drafted 52nd in 2018. In 2019, you had Ben Banigou at 49. Ben Banigou? <laughs> ben Banigou. At any rate, not really any good to this point. Hasn't really done anything where you point to him and say, hey, he's got something. Look at this guy. Ben Banigou, not yet. Maybe 
moving forward. Maybe he becomes that guy, the guy that Chris Ballard foresaw when he grabbed him at 49, traded up for him actually at 49 in 2019. And then also in 2019, with a 59th overall pick out of Ohio State, the Colts took Paris Campbell. Look, Paris Campbell can't stay healthy. That's not Paris Campbell's fault, and it's not the Colts' fault necessarily for not understanding that. What I do blame them for is not taking Terry McLaurin, because when you look at all the boxes that Chris Ballard needs to check in order to draft a guy, Terry McLaurin checks all of them. Great character guy. Wants to be coached. Now, is he a blazing fast guy? He's got great hands. He's a tremendous athlete. He's one of those guys. I saw him practice at Cathedral when he went to Cathedral High School here in Indianapolis. And your eyes just went to him immediately, locked onto this kid. He just sat in the bleachers, sat down, and looked at the field. And as you focused on the field, your eyes went, there he is. That's Terry McLaurin. Looked like a pro when he was 17. Practiced on offense, never practiced on defense, but he was the best defensive player on the field without practicing at it. That's how good an athlete Terry McCorn was. Colts, they went for the burner with Paris Campbell. He hadn't been able to stay on the field. Terry McLaurin, meanwhile, is a captain for the Washington football team. That almost never happens with a wide receiver. Um, it's going to be an interesting night, even though it's going to be an early night as the Colts pick 54th and then don't have a pick in the third round, and really don't have much to be able to offer to move into the third round because their first-round pick next year, their second-round pick next year, are locked as part of the Carson Wentz trade. They're conditional uh, compens- compensatory picks, right? Either a first-rounder, if Carson Wentz takes 70% of the snaps or more, or a second-rounder if he takes fewer than that. But you've got to maintain both of those picks in order to execute the back end of that trade. And so the Colts, they can't move one of those picks in order to move up this year, and I don't think they should anyway. We'll see what they can get done at 54. If they take an offensive lineman, we know what they're doing. If they don't take an offensive lineman, we kind of know what they're doing too, and they've got a plan B, right? Or they've got a plan A, and drafting a guy at 54 was the plan B. We don't know. Chris Ballard, one thing we do know about Ballard is he plays his cards really close to the vest. We'll find out tonight. 7 o'clock, the second round starts, and it's shortened. There's less time uh, between each pick, so it's a lot more fun than last night as we sat through PSA after PSA after PSA public service announcement for the NFL to show everybody how much the NFL just cares about us, which was sweet. As I look at Roger Goodell, I get all warm inside. I feel like, man, there is a guy who cares about me, and that's why he siphons out $50 million a year in salary from the NFL and his lifetime use of a private plane. That's how much he cares about me. Have I ever been on that plane? No. Put me on the plane. I believe you care about me, Roger Goodell. All right, the Kentucky Derby is tomorrow. I'm going to tell you who's going to win or who has the best chance to win. Of course, it's the favorite, right? But this time, I think the favorite's going to come in. A lot of times with a big field, bad things can happen to the favorite. But I think tomorrow, you got a central quality. The morning line, he's 2-1. to one. I think that's probably where he goes off. 2-1, to one, you know what? That's not a big payday. It's not really worth going online and making the bet. I mean, even a $20 bet just paying 40 bucks. You know, you got to box it up with exactas and stuff. But I'm telling you, if you don't have a central quality as part of your exactas, or your trifectas, or whatever, you're making a mistake because this is the best horse in the field. Undefeated, 17 times an undefeated horse has come into the Derby. Eight times that horse has won the Derby. It's 50-50 roughly. You get two to one odds on a horse like a central quality. You take it. Tomorrow night, the Indiana Pacers take on the Oklahoma City Thunder at 8 o'clock in Oklahoma City. Pacers must win this game. Have to win this game. They are not playing well. They got a lot of guys who are out with injuries. You got to go into OKC and win. Oklahoma City is hot garbage. You got to beat them if you want to go to the playoffs. We'll see if the Colts or if the Pacers are able to do just that. We'll see. Depending on what happens tonight, we'll either do a YouTube live or we won't. I'm not promising anything. We did one last night. I enjoyed it. We'll see if we do one tonight. If we don't, we'll talk to you Monday morning, breakfast with Kent, bright and early, six o'clock.